In this corner, we have the AT2020 from Audio-Technica. And in this corner, we have the Behringer B2 Pro. Both of these microphones are, of course, condenser microphones. The Audio-Technica is not technically a large diaphragm. It's more of a medium diaphragm, but that's, that's what we're testing here. Sort of a medium diaphragm versus a large diaphragm microphone. So both of these are approximately the same price with the Audio-Technica AT2020 usually being about $100, while the B2 Pro is usually about $150. However, the B2 Pro also comes with a hard case, a shock mount, and a windscreen, while the Audio-Technica usually just comes with sort of a basic mount. So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and start the mic war. <laughs> Here we are in Pro Tools and we have several samples of the AT2020 and the B2 Pro from different distances and also with an air conditioner on. We have raw samples and processed samples. All of the processed samples use Isotope Nectar 2 because it has an EQ, a gate, a de compressor, limiter, all of the things you would use to produce a professional sounding voice track. The raw samples, you will notice they do have some volume added to them, some gain added to them here with the clip gain, and that's because if you were listening to the raw sample coming in at how it was recorded next to the process sample, you'd get something like this. Video for your podcast or for your... The Audio-Technica AT20. A giant difference there in your volume, and then you would have to be writing your volume up and down, and that makes no sense, and it's of course much easier to listen to and to test and to judge which of these microphones sounds better if the volume is much closer. The raw samples are not volume matched by any means, but they are they are simply raised higher. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and start this mic war between the AT2020 and the B2 Pro. The Audio-Technica AT2020 from around six inches away, the Audio-Technica AT2020, listen to the sound of the voice. Is this the sort of sound that you would like for your YouTube video, for your podcast, or for your voiceover. The AT2020. The Behringer B2 Pro from around six inches away. A large diaphragm microphone. Listen to the sound of the voice, the quality of the voice. Is this the sound of voice you would like for your voiceovers, for your YouTube videos, for your narration, or for your podcast? Again, from around six inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Audio-Technica AT2020 from around six inches away. The Audio-Technica AT2020, listen to the sound of the voice. Is this the sort of sound that you would like for your YouTube video, for your podcast, or for your voiceover? The AT2020. The Behringer B2 Pro from around six inches away. A large diaphragm microphone. Listen to the sound of the voice, the quality of the voice. Is this the sound of voice you would like for your voiceovers, for your YouTube videos, for your narration, or for your podcast? Again, from around six inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Audio-Technica AT2020, this time with an air conditioner on in the background just to get an idea of how sensitive this microphone is overall. How much sound does it reject? Well, you're hearing it right now. We are about three to four inches away from the capsule, and I'll also tap a little bit on a keyboard just to get an idea of the sound that the AT2020 will pick up in the background. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time around three to four inches away, but we have an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of sound that might be picked up in a room, and we're also typing on a keyboard to hear the background noise with the voice, get an idea of how a large diaphragm condenser is very sensitive to its surroundings. The Behringer B2 Pro large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Audio-Technica AT2020, this time with an air conditioner on in the background just to get an idea of how sensitive this microphone is overall. How much sound does it reject? Well, you're hearing it right now. We are about three to four inches away from the capsule, and I'll also tap a little bit 
on a keyboard just to get an idea of the sound that the AT2020 will pick up in the background. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time around three to four inches away, but we have an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of sound that might be picked up in a room. And we're also typing on a keyboard to hear the background noise with the voice. Get an idea of how a large diaphragm condenser is very sensitive to its surroundings. The Behringer B2 Pro large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Audio-Technica AT2020 from around two to three inches away, trying to take advantage of some of that proximity effect. I can even ease up on it really close here to about an inch away from the AT2020. And you'll notice that it does not have the same response as a actual large diaphragm microphone. That proximity effect is not nearly as pronounced, not nearly to the effect that you would get it with a large diaphragm condenser microphone. That's because the AT2020 is not actually a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's actually much closer to a medium or small diaphragm because it has that 16 millimeter diaphragm in the Audio-Technica AT2020. Again, from around two to three inches away, listen to the sound of the voice of the Audio-Technica AT2020. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time from around two to three inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone, you can definitely start hearing this microphone open up as you start to get closer, like we are two to three inches away. I can even come even closer to this microphone, get around one inch away, and it really opens up. You can take advantage of that proximity effect, get that enhanced low end, and basically get that sort of radio voice very easily once you really start to get closer to a large diaphragm microphone like the Behringer B2 Pro. Again, the Behringer B2 Pro, a large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Audio-Technica AT2020 from around two to three inches away, trying to take advantage of some of that proximity effect. I can even ease up on it really close here to about an inch away from the AT2020. And you'll notice that it does not have the same response as a actual large diaphragm microphone. That proximity effect is not nearly as pronounced, not nearly to the effect that you would get it with a large diaphragm condenser microphone. That's because the AT2020 is not actually a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's actually much closer to a medium or small diaphragm because it has that 16 millimeter diaphragm in the Audio-Technica AT2020. Again, from around two to three inches away, listen to the sound of the voice of the Audio-Technica AT 2020. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time from around two to three inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone, you can definitely start hearing this microphone open up as you start to get closer, like we are two to three inches away. I can even come even closer to this microphone, get around one inch away, and it really opens up. You can take advantage of that proximity effect, get that enhanced low end, and basically get that sort of radio voice very easily once you really start to get closer to a large diaphragm microphone like the Behringer B2 Pro. Again, the Behringer B2 Pro, a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And there it is, the AT2020 versus the Behringer B2 Pro. Which microphone did you like best? Leave a comment below with the microphone that you thought won this epic battle of the budget condenser microphones, the AT2020 versus the Behringer B2 Pro.